Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Today we're going to talk about the warp function in the MPC. Let's go into the uh, sample edit. We're going to be working with this drum loop. Okay, and as you can see, the drum is originally, it's an 80 BPM drum loop, okay? And if you have a look down here, you'll see that the MPC detected the loop to have 160, 159, uh, it's 160. And it's correct, but it's actually doubling the BPM. So we're gonna have to change that. And you can change it right here, or you can change it in the program edit. Okay, first off, let's go here to the browser, and I wanna assign. Okay, so I have that sample assigned to this drum pad. Let's go into the program edit. Let's turn the warp function on. Okay, and now let's go for the BPM. So we now have our pad with the drum loop set to 80 BPM, which is the original BPM of the drum loop. Okay, we have the BPM sync on. Let's go to the main, and we'll see that the BPM of the sequence is set to 90. When we have the BPM sync on, it means that the warp function is being synchronized with the BPM of the sequence. So if you move the BPM of the sequence, it will warp your sound as well. Let's type in, let's type in 80, do it. So let's have a, let's have a listen. So it's playing at the exact same speed of the original tempo. If we make this higher, let's go to 100. We are now warping the sound by using the BPM here. If we go higher, the sound will speed up, will warp, make it faster. If we go down on the BPM, If we have this turned off, the sample will only be warped by the percentage now, 100% being the original length of the audio. Okay, if you go down on the percentage, it speeds it up. If you go higher, And it doesn't matter if you move this up or down because you have the BPM sync set to off. Moving the BPM here, it will not affect the sample. It will not do anything, but you can still warp the sample right here. So really the difference here, and you have two methods of warping the sample. One is by using the BPM sync, which means that you're locking the warp function to the BPM of the sequence. And the other one is by using the percentage here, and that way you are not locking the sample to the BPM. It means that the, the warp value that you set to that sample will stay consistent throughout the whole project. It will not change in case you change the, the uh, BPM of the, uh, of the sequence. And that's it. There's literally not much else that you need to learn here with the, the, with the warp function, okay? If you don't know the BPM of your sample, what you can do back in the sample edit, where it says detect, you have the tap tempo. You can try to find your BPM by just tapping as you hear the sound. So you can find it that way in case you don't know the BPM, okay? And once you do know the BPM, just go into your warp function and type it in there. And those are the two ways of warping 
samples on the MPC. Okay, very simple. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Okay, if you do have any questions, if there's something that I missed, please let me know. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.